Okay, now I would request Sky Senior Professor Balachandran sir to share their to share his view on this occasion. Over to you, sir. Be blessed by the divine. He gave an excellent speech on the Kiran. And then others also added their own bits, Dr. Tawamani and earlier from UAE. So it's a very good experience. So just a thought came to me. We talk about missing link in our, between the human being and others. There has been a missing link which you have missed. But I think the whole world, the missing link is the concept of consciousness. Right, sir. If, yes, if only this missing link can be covered. And that's why Maharishi, uh, in his uh, great wisdom, has called this as temple of consciousness. We have never yes. seen a temple dedicated to consciousness. Huh. One of his great books has been Journey of Consciousness. So if this concept of consciousness comes into every field, in the field of politics, in the field of economics, in the field of science, in the field of religion. I think then all these problems which has been artificially created by human beings will be able to come out. So that is the idea I think uh, Professor Nakiran has given to all of us. And so I think we should pursue this even more seriously. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your comment. It is most needed. It's like Swamiji is giving his own comment. Thank you, sir. Would request all Sky professors, directors to share their views on this occasion, please. Dr. Shanmuga Velu, sir. Yeah, please. We are unmeeting you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Today's yes, talk is, is a wonderful talk. And uh, it was, uh, I was imagining something and it, he was concurring with me in every aspect. Conscious is not within us. We are within the consciousness. And only when our mind expands, we can realize that consciousness. And he said clearly, only through meditation, we can realize the consciousness. It's a beautiful concept and beautiful conclusion. Thank you very much, sir. This is the idea I am having and you superimposed and you confirmed that idea. It's a very good talk and you have compressed in, a, in, in an intelligent way and you concluded in a beautiful way to the final result. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 We are unmuting you, Professor Rangasamy. Please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Shankari. It was a extremely an excellent uh, way in which uh, Professor Nakiran, Senior Professor Nakiran has explained, especially when he said, understand the nature and uh, the real rest of what he said, uh, the rest of the consciousness was uh, amazing. It was... Uh, when he gave an engineering example of a coil spring and the mind expands when you pull the spring on both the ends, I was really practicing here with a coil spring, how it reacts. It tries to compress rather than pull it. So that uh, the real uh, fact is that the compressive force is also acting simultaneously with this repulsive force, what he said was absolutely both together, he said consciousness was wonderful, sir. And uh, it was able to, uh, you know, <clears throat> interact with you. Every word of yours was uh, kindling our desire to know and talk to you further on this subject. Thank you very much. I have one question. Uh, what is the spiritual consciousness? What Swami uh, yes. says, you know, I have uh, not with, uh, you know, like you, you have been with him, but I could not meet him and ask these questions like, you know, when he said material consciousness, I, we could understand. But then what uh, is the spiritual consciousness? At what stage it kind of comes into? Yeah. Uh, Swamiji asked, what is uh, called the spirit? <laughs> uh, spirit uh, is generally, we know it is a liquid. Um, Tamil will call Sarayam. It is because uh, it, it, it existence you can see. Once you open it, it will evaporate it. 
uh, whereas in the uh, life force is also called the spirit swamiji says because it is same like uh, that spirit uh, physical uh, spirit on the material world material world the spirit is there in the spiritual world we say our life force is there we cannot see it but in once it has gone we can understand the body is not uh, functioning functionless so it is called spirit when it is within the body it is a good spirit but when it is outside the body it is called the evil spirit so it means spirit is nothing but a, a life force so the power drawn from the spirit is called the spiritual power that's what swami ji said then we had a doubt uh, then divine power is different from spiritual power no the divine power is nothing but dive in the word divine is derived from dive in by crossing your five senses when you dive in go deep within yourself you will be able to unearth the spiritual power or the spirit uh, power of the spirit or the power of the life force which is called the divine power so the divine power is nothing but the power which is uh, with the, when it is functioning in the body it is spiritual power when it is outside of functioning it is divine power so the consciousness awareness of the spirit with the functioning in the body is spiritual consciousness when you are aware that when you are able to realize your life force its movement its functioning within your body through your meditation you know is spiritual consciousness or spiritual power or it means when your mind is focused on your life force you are able to realize the life force and expand it up to the cosmic energy level or the absolute space then you are in the spiritual consciousness thank i think you, i am clear to you sir. wonderful yeah thank you very much sir it's quite thank clear you, thanks for the why hello madam thanks for the question uh, professor rangasamy uh, sir do you have any more questions sir okay sir i have a question no, please uh, how can the knowledge of consciousness lead to refinement of human beings yeah knowledge of consciousness uh, in the level is something like uh, uh, your person a uh, boy is uh, crying for a car a toy car a boy is crying for a toy car because his age is only 5 whereas the father has got the potential to buy a mercedes benz car when the boy grows his uh, uh, consciousness his mind uh, level uh, maturity of the mind grows up now when he is 20 he wants a car he is asking his father can we buy an alto or a small car father says no why why don't we buy our wealth is so much i have got so much bank deposit for you then the boy is overwhelmed by the father's uh, it is possible when the boy get the maturity in his consciousness as a young child he is conscious as a 20 year old boy he is conscious now the difference is the level of understanding that is the difference in the consciousness so all these people are functioning in the peripheral consciousness that is about the team the temperamental stage at the instinct level in the body when you make them to realize their own life force through the meditation when we make them to expand their mind they will be understanding the nature the cause the effect and they will be able to perceive they will be able to adapt to the society adapt to the situation they will be able to understand and handle things properly so they will handle their life handle the world and everything in the nature properly that is why we have to make the people conscious of their consciousness thank you excellent sir thank you thank you so much now we would request a senior uh, sky professor uh, director dr rabinder to share his view on this occasion occasion what shall we then why hello madam sir yes the proceedings have been going on in a higher level and uh,
various points have been highlighted. Now, the attractive force and the repulsive force. The attractive force and the repulsive force. Is it the same or two different entities? It is the same force until it touches the center of the genetic center. It is the attractive force. And when that bends and uh, returns, changes its direction, it becomes a repulsive force. The attractive force and the repulsive force are one and the same, but the way they act, the place where they act are different. Similarly, the consciousness is one and the same within the body or outside the body, anywhere, it is the same. Universal consciousness and individual consciousness are the same, but the individual consciousness shows lot of variations as against the universal consciousness. And how we get into the various uh, manifestations of the same consciousness picture. You see the biomagnetic field represented, projected in the screen. This shows the four waves, the beta, alpha, theta and delta. Each wave has manifests a different type of consciousness. And all these four types of consciousness are within our own self. And where you focus your awareness, your vector point, then that will be the manifestation of the divine. So, if the wave is closer to the genetic center, the speed is much less. The density of the area around the genetic center is very high. So, the speed of the wave the frequency and the speed both comes down and it is 0 to 4. In this, the consciousness manifests in the divine way and almost just like the wave expanding, our mind also expands to, the, to that of the universal consciousness and to manifest as the universal consciousness, divinity or universal consciousness. And uh, the, at the other end, you have the beta wave in connection with the five sense organs, jnana indriya, and uh, we get into quattro. Now, with the deliberations and consciousness, we also have, we have come to know it is all due to the imprints. Yeah, the imprints only decide the behavior of the individual, the personality of the individual. Can we get along without producing any imprint? Is there any possible possibility of an individual living without creating the imprints? We all will agree that within the womb, within the mother, we managed to get along without imprints. And after delivery, the imprints starts, we start accumulating things. And at the other extreme, when you attain the, what they call action, devotion, uh, practices, yoga, and the silence, absolute silence, ultimately, or jnana, when you attain that jnana, at that stage, again, you are working without a center. 
and without a center you have no possibility of creating a imprint and in these states we don't develop a store we don't have a uh, material for memory and we live without any memory and uh, these states of uh, not creating a uh, imprint is uh, a either two we have not explored this <clears throat> aspect of consciousness consciousness not creating any imprints where the five senses are you have transcended the five senses beyond and there are no inputs into the uh, brain system and it doesn't store anything at that level when you have the images of light sound taste and smell and pressure you take all the images to the genetic center and when there is no focus point focal point when it is all expanded in a streamlined motion we don't have imprints only in a spinning system in a vertex system you have the uh, imprints formation and uh, this is uh, uh, the way the siddhas live the people who have realized the consciousness who have uh, taken this behavior this uh, way of acting functioning of the consciousness into theirs identical with that then they also live without any imprints and the imprints only color your personality and without the imprints you attain nirvana and uh, all these things are brought about in the various uh, lectures and especially today the presentation has interesting uh, points for you to ponder where are the six uh, places where you get the imprints and uh, action is from the human and the result is from the divine and uh, consciousness will help you to understand this and uh, finally the real rest and the rest to consciousness the what will be the state of consciousness in the stage of rest the consciousness at the shakti kalam is one at the shiva kalam is one and when it crosses beyond beyond the void viliki apart viliki ul vedi so these stages are the places where there are absolutely no uh, change in these things the consciousness as it comes into the uh, the dynamic state the universe the panchabudas and the other changes takes place and you get it panchabudas are one thing and the spinning system of the living appearance of the living uh, species living beings is second and panchakoshas is one thing as you dive in you go to the center which is bliss and the cause and effect system the imprints all those things take us to understand the journey of consciousness from the source to the end so we are dealing with these consciousness at various levels and i am glad that we are have completed nearly eight sessions and i thank the whole team responsible 
for the performance today. Uh, Senior Professor Nakiran has uh, explained the levels of consciousness in a lucid way. And uh, he has sent his uh, speech also to the department for story and for utilization in the compilation of the uh, book. Magarishi's Consciousness is the book, which will be a compilation of all these uh, 360 degrees lectures together. So that is, uh, I thank especially uh, Senior Professor Nakiran for the excellent exposition and clear understanding. Uh, the audience, I thank you very much. And thank you for keeping quiet without any questions. And uh, I think you will start asking questions in the next session. And uh, the Middle East team, uh, consisting of uh, Dr. Tawamani and her team, they have done very well, extremely well. And we are proud to have the Dubai and the Middle East team with us. And, uh, thank you one and all for your uh, successful uh, part played in this meeting. And uh, as usual, we have the uh, comparing uh, spirit uh, Sankari Naresh. She has taken the proceedings so smoothly and beautifully. And she uh, encourage everyone to give their best. And uh, we have the strong team of Rangasamy, Shanulavel, Balachandran, and uh, Raj Shekhar, and uh, Kutralam, and others, Muthumani, everyone, to make this possible. I appreciate their efforts in bringing this every week. And uh, I also appreciate our uh, principal, Jay Prakash, and his team with Arjun and all. And we hope to and, uh, continue to get all your cooperation for the successful performance of the next week and the succeeding weeks. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks again to all participants. Please participate in this event every week. Next week, 5th March 2021, we have Sky Senior Professor yes, Dr. Rabindranath speaking on the topic of Kayakalpa and Consciousness. You can watch and subscribe to Consciousness 360 videos on the YouTube channel Vedatriyam Gurukulam and the Facebook page Vedatri Magarishi Kundalini Yoga. Spread the word to all your sky friends. Let everyone take part in this event. May the blessings of Almighty and Guru Yogiraj Vedatri Magarishi be with us always. See you all next week. Practice our sky yoga system every day. Stay safe till then. Be blessed by the divine. Wal Holamudan. Now we are going to conclude the session with World Peace Prayer. Wal Holamudan. Ulaganala Wal Tudan. Give it shame to be say group.